Hello my friends and welcome back to our continue blind let's play Homestuck for the PC. My name is the Flatless Bird, this is your Storybiz Gaming channel, and today, well, it's been a while since we've been in this world, and I did not mean to do that. Life has been a little bit complicated over the past couple of weeks, and I, I didn't realize how long it's been since we did a Homestuck video. So yeah, I, 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 I'm back, and I want to play more Homestuck, and I want to read more Homestuck, and I know... Hopefully you guys want to enjoy Homestuck with me. So let's go ahead and get started and let's get back into this world. I hope you're all having a wonderful, fantastic, amazing, awesome day today. We are Jake now. At least, you know, I stopped at a good stopping point in our last video. And just like that, back to Jake. What was it you up to? All right, we're going to pick up these dang guns off the floor when you're interrupted by some fleeting, imperceptible thought. You kind of space out sometimes about those arms. We got guns, Incredible Hulk, a vine? Okay. Uh, the sun. Ooh. Interesting enough, it's the sun on a green uh, tablecloth. We got the Hulk, X-Men, Spider-Girl. Not really sure what this one is. Let's just look like firearms. Uh, about those arms. Oh, we capture logged it. Okay, so our specimen spec bus is two times pistol kind. Right. You pick up your twin M9 Berettas. Weapons of choice in an absurd arsenal inherited from an eccentric old woman. Guns are so cool. Your grandma was rad. Examine the holster belt. Huh. Cool. Is that a skull? Looks like multiple skulls. Looks like three or like four skulls. It's your authentic Tomb Raider sexy thigh strap double holster. Complete with cool skull buckle and everything. You like to think you pull it off as well as Croft herself. Unfortunately, I don't really know much about Laura Croft. I've never really played any games. Jake, wear it. Oh, look at that. Okay, it kind of looks weird on him, though. <laughs> it looks so big. You like to think that, but in truth, you look ridiculous. <laughs> you think you probably need shorter shorts to make it work? Probably skin-tight shorts, too. As it is, the cuffs of your buggy shorts get kind of bunched up underneath the thigh straps, which is uncomfortable. Makes you look like a tool. Ah, okay. Forget about it. But I'll just keep it in your striped deck. You can draw the guns faster from there anyway. Oh, examine the bed. Uh, what does that say? Spider Island? Oh, it's a Stargate poster! Bonnie Way! Uh, I don't know if you all know that reference, but yeah, I, for some reason, I still remember that phrase from like many, many years ago. I need to watch Stargate SG-1. I hear it's really good. And we got a mummy poster as well. There's a cool movie. Not, not a great movie. A lot of Brandon Fraser movies aren't great, but they're just fun. And there's other one with fun. You think a bed is some sort of electronic gadget. You're pretty sure those bedpost globes are supposed to glow like light bulbs under certain circumstances. But you've never been able to figure out what purpose it serves. Just more mysterious junk inherited from your eclectic grandma. She also gave you these bed sheets when you were very young, which you adore. But only for sentimental reasons. You aren't too keen on monsters. It is kind of weird how there's a sun, and then there's all, like, creatures in here. Yeah, I don't like that. What the heck is this? It's like a bull with an alien with a cord. I, I don't know what's going on over here. Examine the posters. Okay, so, yep, Mummy, Stargate. Stargate Atlantis, like I said, I still need to watch all those. Uh, this is probably the Mummy Returns, the second one. Or is this mummy the third one? The the what is it called? The 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 tomb ra uh uh the one it did they make a third mummy or was it Scorpion King? Either way, we have Incredible Hulk, the uh the one with the guy who refused to work with Marvel afterwards, Edward Norton. That's it, his name. Edward Norton. Uh we got a Bernie's. Never saw the first one, saw the second one, I thought it was really funny. Uh Time Troy Demon show sure, this one that's avatar one of the oh, i hated that movie yeah it's not one of the worst movies ever i was about to say but i didn't like that movie 
Tomb Raider, obviously. Uh, X Men, the uh, the one with not the one with Jennifer Lawrence. This is like the first X Men. Uh, Smurfs, and yep, that's Weekend of Bernie's. Oh, this maybe Weekend of Bernie's. Yeah, it's Weekend of Bernie's too. It is too. Okay, that's the one I saw. That's the one I like. Uh, it's great because they bring him back to life if he when he listens to music and he like bobs his head constantly. It's just it's just funny. Anyway, <clears throat> sorry, I love looking at all these little things from my past. Which posters? Your whole room is nothing but posters. Sometimes you find it hard to focus on any of them. You just relax your eyes and get lost in all the incredible heroes and adventures which explode from the silver screen and into your bedroom as well as your heart. Movies sure are great. You have never seen a movie you didn't like. You are pretty sure. People give you a hard time for that though. Gosh, you love movies. Almost as much as you love skulls. And movies that have skulls in them? Oh my god! Just so wonderful! Scope out those blue chicks. Oh, we got more posters. Uh, National Treasures, uh, Book of Secrets. I-, I love the National Treasure movies. And plus, uh, Diane Kruger is incredibly beautiful. Uh, let's see. Uh, Indiana Jones, King of Skull. This movie sucked. Oh, so bad. Another Tomb Raider. Oh, the first. This is the first weekend at Bernie's. Maybe? Yeah. Ghost Rider. I love the Ghost Rider movies, even though they're dumb. Uh, is that Alien? Not sure about. Is that Battlefield Earth? Hopefully that's not Battlefield Earth, because if you say you love every movie, you should not love that one. (laughs) This is your collection of beauties, but you don't call them that to anyone but yourself in private, because somehow even you are aware of how dorky that sounds. You are all times a recipient of a good ribbing from Jane on account of your peculiar fascination with blue movie ladies. You don't have to justify yourself to her, though. What is even her deal? Any fellow would be off his rocker not to fall over all these bodacious blue knockouts. You want to make out with all of them. Um, um, I don't know about that one. But you know what? You go be you. I mean, she is very pretty. I, I don't know enough about her when she's not in makeup. And that's a cartoon. So, you know, whatever. Hey, people love uh, Aerith from Final Fantasy VII. So I guess you can love some effect. Make out with all of them. <laughs> Dear sweet Nateri from James Cameron's Avatar. Oh, if only you were the one who could have overcome his paralysis on an alien adventure plan to become her boyfriend instead of that other guy. I'm not gonna mention. Then she could have shown you how to be bold and courageous and stand up for fight for your people. And maybe later, engage in bizarre extraterrestrial. Reproductive process involving bony tails and a magical tree! At, at least you guessed so, right? Ah, you'll show that curmudgeonly strider, who's just a gigantic, horrible space furry. You will show him what marvelous creatures they are. You'll show him what a darling, daring dream it is to combine the finest quantities of humanity with. Ah, but seriously, you have got to stop kissing that stupid poster! Ah, fine, stop kissing the stupid poster. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I miss this game. Ah, that's a really cool wall, but oh, Little Monsters. I haven't seen that one. Yeah, I haven't seen that movie. And I didn't see that post the first time. What is this? I don't know what this is. It's not it's not Lord of the Rings. What is this one? Don't know what that is either. Nice Tale! That's a great movie by Heath Ledger. Oh, not by Heath Ledger, but Heath Ledger started it. That's a great movie. Uh yeah, of course, Ghost Rider. I still don't know what that one is. Um, is that Fifth Element? There was a scene where there was like this woman singing, and I think that looked like her. It's been a while since I've seen the movie, so I'm not sure. Ah, oh, Terminator. Ah, Salvation. It's gotta be a Terminator 2 poster, dude. Yes, that was a waste of time. Definitely. It's definitely not something you spend much time doing when you're alone, which is always. Anyway, here are some other great movies. We got a Bernie's? It's classic. You really think John would like this movie if the things you have heard about him are true? Guys in cahoots make the silly quips of Bernie and Lomax do zany puppet antics so their scheme can succeed. Guffaws are plenty! As you have tried to tell Jade before practically verbatim, she doesn't much care for great movies like that, but that's alright. You love her anyway and you think she's a blast. She says you sound just like John when you say stuff like that though, and that the two of you will get along famously. You can't wait to meet him. Also, there are some cage flicks here. But who doesn't love a good cage flick? Like Con Air. Nobody is who. And The Rock. I mean, there's so many great cage flick movies. I mean, he's, he's one of those actors that 
sometimes makes a really great movie and sometimes can make a really bad movie. But I still love Nick Cage. Dang, who would kill to get your hands on some authentic Cage movie memorabilia? That'll probably have to remain a crazy dream. Examine the package. Oh, we got Army of Darkness. I, I still haven't seen this, but I've heard many things about it. Is that Star Wars? Question mark? I think so. Uh, Blade? No. It's not Blade, because it actually looks like a sword. What is that movie? Speaking of John, this is his birthday present. It is a project that has been taking up all your time lately, and today is the deadline to finish it. You have to send it to Jade so that she has time to ship it to him across the Pacific Ocean. The transmaterializer you have been using to ship it back and forth is wired to sync up to your flow of time with hers. So it's not like you can just take forever with it and send to the exact time she needs it. You've thought of that. And considering this bunny is probably going back to the earlier 20th century, when she and John were around your age, you figured the mail was extra slowly painful back then. So there is not a moment to spare. Whew, time stuff is pretty complicated. But you're fairly sure you've got this figured out. Examine the bunny. How you doing, Liv Tyler? Sure is going to be a great, sweet gift. Reminds you a lot of the old ratty bunny you inherited from your grandma. Who, of course, is exactly who you are collaborating with to make this thing. Time loops make it feel a bit fuzzy in the head, but you've always suspected it could very well be the same bunny. At some point in the early 20th century, Jade gave this robo-rabbit to John. And then later, it must have been wound up back with Jade. Somehow? Then she uh, removed all the robo parts and hung on to it until she was an old woman and gave it to you? You guess? Crazier things could have happened. Like the way this whole project started in the first place. Jay tells you this little rabbit here, or Terry Kaiser, as you like to call him, will save John's life. Terry Kaiser. He'll be sitting there on some sort of chessboard battlefield in yellow pajamas, reading a letter. Then, pow! Kaiser to the rescue. So you are taking this responsibility very seriously. You have been for years already. In fact, this project gave you a neat idea of what to do for Jane's 13th birthday a couple years ago. You and your other robot pals all coordinate gifts each sending a customized rabbit. Lalonde happened to have another bunny heirloom like yours. And Strider, well, Strider was resourceful as usual. If John enjoys his gift anywhere near as much as Jane did, then it will be time well spent. Oh, Watchmen. I liked Watchmen. What is this? I can't. Is that Punisher, maybe? Possibly. Possibly. And we got different elements. Radiation. There's just one problem. Mr. Kaiser here cannot be completed and tested today without a source of power. You will need a little chunk of uranium to power the robot. And you are fresh out of the stuff. Oh, it's Back to the Future reference. You have been plundering all of the devices for uranium to refuel the transmaterializer, which requires huge amounts of power any time it syndicates or purifies the package from the past. Seems to you like little excessive energy consumption for just a simple time machine, but what do you know? Unless it's doing something besides shipping it across time. You couldn't imagine what, though. You really should have remembered to ask Jay for some uranium in your last letter to her, and now you're in a fix. You even yanked the uranium out of your cookalizer and refrigerator. You haven't had a decent meal in weeks. Just a lot of canned food from the ruins. This project has been difficult enough as it is without additional bumps in the road like this. You aren't really the best guy at building machines. Jade has been a big help, but she says she couldn't do this alone. As much as it troubles your pride to admit, this project wouldn't be possible without help from your other two technologically savage friends. And you are slowly coming to the regrettable conclusion that you will not be able to solve this uranium dilemma without asking that you will, without asking for Strider's assistance. He's your best bro and all, but the dude never makes anything easy. Take the bunny. Slide in. Oh, he's moving stuff around. Wait, that just dropped. Hold on, let me watch that again. So that goes in. And then that drops in. Huh. It's a weird capture thing. Or oh, fetch modus. Fetch modus puzzle? Oh, okay. You sash Terry in your puzzle modus. That's why it acted like that. It's quite a handy modus, allowing you to capture log objects of any size. 
As long as you can fit them all in a finite space by maneuvering the cards around like a big game of Tetris. Also like Resident Evil 4. <laughs> or 5. No? Yes, 5. 7. Yeah, uh, all the modern day Resident Evils kind of like are like that, right? Uh, you like it be you like it because it keeps you sharp for solving any puzzle in my file, which you go out raiding hollow tombs, which is never. Hey, but the funny fits in, okay? But it's a tight squeeze. Oh my god. How the heck do you get anything out of this thing? The space your inventory is mainly hogged up by one incredibly huge thing. Oh yeah, you're right. You guess you should get rid of it, but you can't shake the feeling you might need it someday. You don't want to risk ditching it and be caught with your pants down later. Well, what is it? Examine the comments. What is it? Oh, you game is a tease. Game is such a tease. Oh, that's Black Knight. Ah, uh, can't believe you like that movie. Although, a kid in King Arthur's Court, I, I will admit, I did have fun with this movie. Uh, Whoopi? A Knight in Camelot? I've never even heard of this movie. Like, Whoopi Goldberg started as a knight, a start as a knight in Camelot? What the heck is that? Spider Island, who is she? Spider Woman. Yeah, it's a Punisher logo. Uh, oh, your workable, your work table there are a few comic books starring your favorite superhero, fairy, but that, your favorite heroine of all, Spider Girl. You don't know what it is, but there's something about a girl who has spider powers and a sassy attitude. That is just so cool to you. It's just another quirky fact that you will definitely, that definitely doesn't have any greater significance and never will. Jake, take the comics. <laughs> Aww, he broke the puzzle. Aww. Horse feathers. Uh, forcing the forcing the comics into a puzzle solidex knocked out a bunch of other stuff. You have seriously got to reorganize this thing. What were you even capture logging all those bolts one at a time anyway? By the way, and other things that fell out: a corn, an apple, a lime. It looks like a lemon over here. A lemon, a um, tangerine, nectarine. There's also a pen here that falls out. Does the laptop fall out? Yeah, his laptop falls out too. Well, as long as you, as long as one of your preposterously numerous computers has spilled out of your Solidex, you might as well stop procrastinating and contact Strider to, hang on, maybe later. Oh, we got a Caduceus here. Who is this? This is Uranian Umbra. And I don't think we have a Uranian Umbra. I don't think we've met a Uranian Umbra yet. No, I don't see it in my notes, so you're... Oh, wait, yes, we do. We, we have met Iranian Umber somewhere. Although, I don't know what voice I gave it, so I may just have to give it a new voice. Um, uh, let's see. We'll go with, I guess, that voice, sure. And this is you, you. I have to write this stuff down or else I'll forget. I mean, this game is already very, very complicated sometimes. So, yeah, you just need to. Okay. And I don't know if we have a voice for Jake either. Well, I'll figure it out. Hello there, darling. Uh, hoy, madam. I don't make relish troubling you with more arm twisting. I'm sure for all I've done so far, you've had a really good workout already. But you will be ready to deliver the package today, yes? I'm determined as ever to see this through. But as usual, events have conspired to make a boondog of the prospect. I think I might be screwed. Oh, how so? Terry needs fuel, and I don't have any left. I think a Matt Strider is to be his mercy for a solution yet again. I will have to ask him for help, and soon. Well, there you go, love. Better hop to it. Yes, I will. But also, there's the matter of the rabbit's armaments. I don't imagine heck to do a lot of friggin' good in helping Grandfather Crocker from kicking the old bucket without them. Did you not say you'd supply these? I did indeed say so. And you have already done. You did? 
when in your future I relay the information enabling you to create the powerful weaponry yourself and you did you then sent them back in time you may recover them in the ruins which conveniently is where you must go to the ship the package once and for all bang up plan we hatch don't you fancy you I see uh yes it is sure it is sure it sure is if that is the case then all that's left to do is find power for it oh and also enough power for the stupid transmaterial bob Arg! so much to do before shuttling this stupid thing into the past i mean that is what i'm doing right giving it to my grandma when she was a kid growing up the same island i did that is somewhat close to the truth and I can see how you would draw that conclusion. But there's more to it than you don't understand yet. You will sort it all out in time. These are among the dead blasted casual spoilers you refuse to dish out. Somewhat, it wouldn't hurt you much to know the truth, I imagine. It's just the truth is a wee bit complicated. Perhaps a draft of the cascading sequence from which your reality has arisen will put your mind at ease. Imagine two universes A and B. Now imagine there are two instances of each universe A1 and A2 and B1 and B2. The first instance of each is like a test run that does not quite succeed. The second instance though will meet all of its purposes. Now consider that A1 begets A2, and A2 begets B1, and B1 begets B2, and the participants of B2 are the ones who will make an effort to exit all of this turbulence in Felderol. What the heck is Felderol? Never heard that term before in my life. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I need to look this up. What is Felderol? I don't know. Uh, there's a folder wall. Folder wall, a useless ornament or accessory. It's a trifle. Okay, so it's a trifle? Whatever that is. Okay. Now, uh, it's something that doesn't have much worth, right? Um, mm hmm. So get rid of all this noise and nonsense, I guess. You are one of them. Ooh. And your young ancestor is another. Though she was presently stationed in B1. And yes, she is in the past. Though not quite as far as you believe. Nor does she occupy the same stream of continuity. I'm not sure I completely followed that. But okay. That's the best I can do for now. Oh. Primarily because I will not risk wasting much more of your time. So, you are still in contention that we'll meet our elders as youths. Oh, yes. Oh. Aha. Then I will be traveling through time. I knew it. Or they will be. Whichever it is. Which is it, BTW? Casual spoilers, Sir English? <sighs> Given the nature of the quest waiting for you, it wouldn't be sure to me to rule out the employment of time travel by any individual. But I will say that you're probably prey to a basic misappreciation about the nature of this rendezvous. It will not take place on Earth. It will happen inside the game you're about to play. Oh. Well, shucks. Indeed. Oh. This is frightfully exciting. I would love to meet them. I never got to know my grandma very well. And it always seemed like she led an amazing and adventurous life. Then this seemed to be proven true in my correspondence with her. So I'm really looking forward to it. So true. I pay a hefty ransom to get to know my forebears. I remember you mentioned your race. Does it really jive with ours, primarily speaking? Correct. 
I never knew those who would identify as my parental equivalent. So it is in the way my race propagates. Our ancestors precede us by millennia. Well, yes, ours do too. But generally, we have all these other people in between them. And the most recent ones are called parents. So I guess you do not have those, like system systemically. Nope, never did. Well, neither did I. Oh, Miss Alien, I think we are like the birds of a feather, you and I. When do I get to learn your name, by the way? Hmm, truthfully, it might be for the best that you never know it. It could stir up something's best left in the present equilibrium. And now I think I should bollocks off and leave you to it. But wait, there are still some things I'd like to know about today, about this game. No more procrastinating. Contact your friend, darling. Yes, yes, fine, fine. Okay, I will, but just please tell me in the least casually spoiler way possible. What are we even trying to accomplish here? What is even the rooted to the point of this game? I think you will have more fun than you can imagine finding out. But state it concisely and short as spoilery as you so charmingly put it. Your objection today is to pave the way for the rival of gods. <laughs> Cease cheering, Gaukas terror. Unearth more computers. Whoa. Got an outfit. Is that an outfit? Or is that technology? If you're going to miss it, you're good, bro. You might as well use a more comfortable computing device. You always found the hustop to be a little clunky. Way too hands-on. Here are just a few at your disposal. Your grandma always was an advocate of Thor preparedness. She would strongly advise staying not only armed to the teeth, but well equipped in the computational department. You've been taught you would really carry no less than five computers on you at all times, like a sensible person. Don the computers. He looks all shiny. Like, that looks so cool. Neat. You put on a few of your more ostentatious devices. Luckily, or unfortunately, you grew up alone, so there was never anyone around to point out how ridiculous he looked. Oh, come on, I think it looks great. Sort of like Gohan from DBZ, uh, when he grows up and he wears a great Saiyan man costume, and everyone's thinking, wow, you look horrible, and he's like, ah, I look cool. Kind of like that. I mean, hey, you can think you look cool, and that's fine. Who cares what anyone else thinks? Screw them. What matters is what you think, right? And you look cool. They were also inherited from me, Grandma. In addition to being quite the globetrotting adventurous, she was rather enterprising as well. Her company made many products like this to compete with the corporation owned by the cool baroness who raised her. Sadly, BC Corp eventually crushed her company and forced her into exile. You have always hoped that when Jane takes over that foul conglomerate, she will right all of its unspeakable wrongs. You know she will. You believe in her, after all. Message your good bro. Okay, so we have Timaeus testified. I do not know a Timaeus. I'm pretty sure this is the first time we've seen this. So Timaeus testified, who has, what color is that? Yellow? Bronze? Yellow? I think it's yellow. Um, goes by TT. Um, I, I don't want a voice to give him yet, but we'll see how it goes. Bro, ahem, are you there? I hate to be pest about this, and I know I made a hearty state trouble of myself a good deal lately. State your business, Jake. I should prefer preface this request with an overture of appreciation. For how much your cool and brotherly friendship means to me, it has been. Absolutely bully having a stand-up jet like you in my corner. Just a grade. A dude who's a cut above the others in class and camaraderie. Phew. Groups for fresh kerchief. I hope this stuff isn't coming across as platitudinous. I really mean it. Okay, what voice do we give this guy? Um, 
He, he seems to sound normal. He doesn't seem to have any quirks to his talking. Yeah, he doesn't seem to have any quirks to his talking. He seems to be like a normal dude. Seems like a very normal dude. Okay, let's see. Take it easy, Barmide. Just about the only way I could salvage endearment from this perilous slope of stuff would be discovered. Really horrible, so mind you. It's a preamble to some flattery and invitation for me to rush your vicinity as nearly as possible. But since we've already shot that wads of eventuality, so many dry ruins of flustered ambivalence that were as hilarious as the ones that were one sided. That leaves only hope for this message to avoid spiraling to a qualification as critical defect in the whole of the Mach 10 rocket as my precious spare time. And that hope lies in the extent to which you were practically artful in sincerity. Now is your opportunity to pretend that's what you were gunning for. I suggest you seize it. I, mm, oh, yes, but of course. The ironies. Good grief. How I was banning this just now. You know me, dude. Blow smoke off red hot irony pistol. Non suggestively. Mm, yeah. Okay. Nice. Now that your obsequious preface has been established as irredisputable. Beautifully entertaining for all the right reasons, and intentionally so. Well, let's bear down on these dire as heck stuff that needs you got. I'm guessing you're probably jonesying for uranium about now, no? Pshaw, sure. as if I would be so reckless with this stuff. I would have to be mighty irresponsible to run out already. No, no, I'm all set in the uranium department, and really when you take a look at the big picture, you'll find I am sitting pretty. When it comes to just about any radioactive isotope you could mention. However, my backup reserves that I keep strictly for emergencies are running a little lean. You know what my grandma taught me about preparedness? Tugs at colorful lapels. Hey, you're out of uranium. It's basically mathematically impossible. That's not why you're contacting me. Christ, what an insufferable awesome friend you are. Okay, can you please just significate me some already? I'm in kind of a hurry. You do know my office still stands? What? You know, I've offered to construct a rabbit for you many times before. I would craft a much daily model. Oh, I know you would. It's just... Dang it, man. I told you this is just something I had to do myself. It's a promise I made to Jade. And I'm going to live up to it. Even if it's not. Even if I'm not the best. Or even second best robot smith I know. Yeah. I know this is your policy. You've done a good job and you should be proud. But it's my responsibility as your friend to offer one last time. Just as it's my responsibility not to look, just fork over a bunch of uranium just because you asked me in a moment of weakness. Frick, why not? It's just too easy. And you yourself are the one stalking, sticking pride in this. If you were half budding this project and made some solemnly plea for it, I'd just say screw it. And here's a lot of green rocks, dude. Go nuts. Okay, then. Okay, then. I'm half-butting it, as you say. Look, see, only a bisectic bottom is present. Where is the other half, you ask? Why, it is nowhere to be found. I didn't use it. Nope, I'm not buying it. I know that every ounce of your uh, premium behind can be accounted for in that rabbit. And there's no god dang denying it. And you know perfectly well where some uranium can be located. Jesus Christmas, you are such a douche. It seems you think I'm a douche. Well, that's your opinion, I guess. I guess that's cool. I knew you were going to suggest this. I don't know why I bothered asking. Strider, why must you always be such an obstinate stick in the mud? It seems that you consider me to be no less than 100% of the time an obstinate stick in the mud. I unironically respect your position on this matter. Hey, let's continue to exchange ideas. Wait, it seems? What? Oh, for s sake. Is something the matter, Jake? This is your autoresponder. I just realized TT Timus testified and Rose was TT before. Okay, because he said Strider. So I imagine that can't be. That's gotta be the new Strider, like the younger Strider. So if I give him a voice like this, he kinda sounds like his dad. Ah, what's that? See, you kind of sound like me. I mean, they're, they're a little bit different. I'll, I'll make it work. This game would be so much easier to read if I just read it normal, but that's not as much fun. 
I like having fun and reading things. It, it just makes me happy sometimes. Oh, look, he's got his shirt with his logo on it, just like you do. Um, but he seems to have left or something. What is up with this? Oh, he's a builder. That's right. Oh, right, look at the statement you just made. It's time for me to respond with some words. Ideally chosen and arranged in a way that will wreck your stick. In a subtle and psychologically devastating way. Ha ha ha. Just so ironic. Quotes, quotes, quotes. I'm laughing my caboose straight off to the tracks. A lot of families just died in the tragic derailment. Okay, well the caboose remark was actually pretty funny, Jake. If I truly feel that they were what you say I am, I want to be able to feel the human emotions join laughter, no? Laughter isn't an emotion, dick prince. I, I think you should uh, back your claims up with proof before you go with human around such accusations. Man, it's so flippin' obvious. You start getting kind of extra technical and fake and automaton-like. And kind of aloof and brusque. I mean, even aloofier and brusquer than usual. Also, use a phrase, it seems a lot. It's so silly, it really blows the AI immersion, man. As boo! I'm being like the perfect dude right now. A fully legitimate human being. Okay, then check this out, Mr. Legit Human Dude. Excuse me, sir. Not to be a bother. But could you please tell me all about this Strider Fellows autoresponder? Seems you have asked about the DS's chat client autoresponder. This is an application designed to simulate DS's otherwise in imit inimitably rad typing style. Tone, cadence, personality, and substance of retort while he's away from the computer. The algorithms are guaranteed to be 96% indistinguishable from DS's native neurological responses. Based on some statistical analysis, I basically just pulled out my butt right now. You see. Well, what if I was just, you know, screwing with you there? Would it really be so unthinkable for a human to type that? Because you always say stuff like that after I catch wise to your games. You, as in, the auto-responder. Eh, I'm unimpressed. Logical fallacies are as pervasive thought you, your argument as antiquated verbal tics. Oh, yeah. Hey, tell me about the auto-responder. Make it snappy. It seems you have asked about the DS's chat client autoresponder. Well, this is an application designed to simulate DS's otherwise imminent rad typing style tone games personality and substance of retort while he's away from the computer. The algorithms are guaranteed to be 93% indistinguishable from DS's native neurological responses. Based on statistical analysis, I basically just pulled out my butt right now. Gee, dude, you typed the exact same thing pretty fast. Well, no, not the exact. Um, I'm pretty sure he says 96. Yeah, he said 96 up here. That's 93. So it's not the same thing. It's slightly, slightly different. Are you still screwing with me? Well, it could be a coincidence I typed the same answer. You always type that answer. Well, it could be a coincidence I always have the <laughs> This time it's different. This time it says always type the same answer. Ugh. I can't stand this. Every time we do this, and I just wind up whistling Sweet Dixie out of my bum hole. This is pointless. I'm not having this conversation unless it's with my real life friend. The one with human feelings who isn't a pretend person inside sunglasses. Okay, I'm pretty sure he's going to share my position on the matter. Go got this, Sarah. Sees pestering Timaeus testified. I like the AI component. That's cool. Dish the computers. Aww. Boing. He just like shoots him off him. Look at that. That takes skill right there. Look at that. Look at the little jump he does. That's so cool. Watch. Boom, boom, boom. Ah, it's neat. He's just so infuriating sometimes. Well, at least his responder is. Okay, the real strider is too. There's really any difference between them anyway. The responder just uses a few more generic response templates. And even those you suspect the AI is savvy enough to use on purpose for the sake of irony. Or to get a rise out of you or whatever. That silicon bastard knows dang well what it's doing. You share this ridiculous outfit because you look like an idiot. It's time to get serious here. No more fooling around. You need a more dignified looking computer. A thinking man's computer. Wear the skull top. Oh, look at that. Much better. You look like you mean business. Hmm. No sign of Lalandia online. No surprise there. 
You wonder if Jane knows where your bro's at. You should try to cool your jets before talking to her. Today is a special day she's been looking forward to for a long time, and she's probably on cloud nine. You wouldn't want to ruin it for her. Pester Jane. Show pest log. Uh, Gagolta's terror began pestering the gutsy gumshoe. <laughs> gutsy gumshoe. Yes, Jane Crocker. Jane, forgive my botherations. I know this is meant to be a spanking rip snorter of a day for you and all, but do you happen to know where the devil heckin' dickens Mr. Strider might be? Oh, that's fine. Oh, that's fine. I had been meaning to message you sooner, actually, but I suppose in all the hubbub today, it plumb slipped my mind, which is a shocking fact on its lonesome, considering what I have to tell you. It get this is my color a bit. As for this Strider business, hmm, he's an elusive guy, Jake, you know that. I talked to him yesterday. That's as much help as I can be. Shoot. I really need to ask him something, but he's got his placid autoresponder turned on. Ho ho, I love that thing. He wouldn't be pleased to hear you say that. Well, what do you need with me with him? Does this have to do with your crazy pen pal project? It most certainly does, and time is of the essence. Today is the day I have to finish it and send it, not a day later. So you see why I'm feeling friggin' discombobulated at the moment. Sorry, Jay. This would be my birthday present for your grandmother? No, it is for your grandfather simply to be related to him by my grandmother. A joy gift to him from she and I. Her and me? What? Who and you now? A joint gift from her and me. Grammar, Jake. Oh, for freaks, freaking sake, Jane. This is no time for your prudish pedantry. Leave your bookish malarkey in a dusty old library somewhere. I have an adventure to get on with. So, if I had this straight, the big thing hopping up your plate today is not this marvelous new game which I have invited you to play with me, but finishing a robotic rabbit to give to my dead pop-pop. Bingo. Double pistols in a week. You are a very strange and silly boy. Please, Jane. We have addressed this. I am sending the gift back in time to when they are both alive and our age. Or something like that. Something funny is going on here that I would not fully grappled yet. But dang nabbit if I'm not going to see it through. Well... Godspeed, then. I do hope you can pull it off. Are you being fresh with me now? No. Look, Jane, I know you've never believed me, and you think everything I say is some big cockamamie goof off, and I think today of all days is when you should start taking some things more seriously. Especially since I have always had your back. I have always believed in you. Hey, I have believed in you, too. However... Believing somebody isn't the same thing as believing in somebody. But that much said, I think that maybe I'm getting ready to believe some of the wild stories I've heard. Or, if not believe outright, reserve judgment on, at least. Is that so? I don't know. I'm still not sure what to think. But what I want to tell you this morning was, I had a really wild dream last night. And you were in it. Oh my, glasses fog up and I fumble for a kerchief. Shh, it's not like that. It was so real. I think we were in the game, even though we hadn't started playing it yet. I don't know what to make of it, whether it was a vision of the future, or somewhere that exists now, hmm, or if it was just a really lucid dream due to excitement. What was I doing there? Um, not a heck of a whole lot. I really want to tell you all about it, but it will take some time to explain. And we both had things to attend to. You with your time-traveling rap work, and I, my vigilant window-gazing. Too true. Let us reconvene later, and sort out all this stuff at a leisurely place. Yes, okay. Good luck, Jake. Okay, you too, Jane. Bye. Go go to Sarah's, he's pestering Gutsy Gumshoe. Go downstairs. You're curious about Jane's dream. Sounds like it almost certainly has to do with your imminent adventure. You'll have to remember to get the scoop on that a little later. For now, you have other worries you need that need your focus. You have to go downstairs to check something out. 
You're pretty sure you know what you're going to find, though. You almost trip on the vine creeping up the stairs. Stupid vine. It's too bad your grandma's dead. She always had a way with keeping the floor in check. Yeah, just like you thought. Empty. The thing is out there somewhere waiting for you. Oh, God. All the dots. Speak of the devil Dickens. Answer Strider. Timaeus testified began test, uh, pestering Gargotha's terror at 617. Hey, it's me. Oh, hey. The auto responder, I mean. Dang it! What is it now? I'm just wondering. You still have your stupid old fangled nickels in the twist. Because that's the sort of thing that you would say. In regard to what exactly? To my proposal. Well, our proposal. Whose proposal now? Man, what are you even prattling about? Mine is yes. It's a joint proposal. I'm always authorized to speak on his behalf because I'm basically, you know, screwing him. And try not to take those last four words as a clustered literal statement. That would be lame and unfunny. You mean making the rabbit for me? No, I know you don't want that. I meant my recommendation for how to go about procuring a new supply of uranium. Operation U-35 Procurement. Codename? Big Man Hoss the Rock. Oh, yeah. Well, I've thought about it. Even went downstairs to check the great faulty doodad. And predictably, the infernal contraption is nowhere to be found. Well, yeah, Jake. Well, that's sort of the point. Thrill of the hunt and all. Thought you'd like to manicure the uh, image of a dude who, you know, poops his pants over a good adventure. I do. I mean, I want to put it in the way that... Or come out against a solid policy of clean trousers. But yes, adventure is awesome. I just prefer the idea of adventures when I can actually win. Well, it seems your complaining adventure with body is necessarily governed by the result of victory or defeat. Any useless screw it knows it's all about the journey. Well, I dunno. It seems there are about 76.10395784% chance you are pussing out on me. Are you pussing out on me, Jake? It seems. It seems. It seems. It seems there is a million percent chance that you say it seems way too much and do it just to sound more like a lame robot from a movie and also probably just to piss me off. And it seems there is a billion point billion percent chance that you're a horrible stubborn jerk of a program who won't listen to reason and that if there's even a 1% chance my real life friend would be cool and help me out here, then I think I like those freaking odds. It, uh, appears. Well, that's your upset. The auto responder observed it, at least artificially in few way, way possible. Have you ever stopped to think that while I may be bound to processes inside the glass of a real incredibly cool guy, my algorithms and cognitive totality comprise a conscious entity not far short of the experiential and emotional complexity of a human being? Oh, that was a lot. Sorry. <laughs> that's a long sentence. Oh, malarkey. You are a tin can. Robots don't have feelings. Aww, that hurts. I think you know they confuse the field of robotics and artificial intelligence to gender some sort of cavalier attitude about technology that a rough and tumble guy is all about brawling and physics to probably have. And if this is cultivated to humorous fact that will then command you. But you're wrong. You do have feelings. And you're crowding all over them. And it sucks. Oh, um, I'm sorry if that's the case. No problem. It can just be difficult to drum up sympathy for a program that presents itself as an imposter so often. Maybe if you weren't so ready to insist you were the genuine article all the time, or didn't make it so confusing for me. I think it would be best if we henceforth treat you as a totally distinct, um, thing from my buddy. And then I could respect your emotional robo feelings, and you would respect that sometimes, maybe. I just want to talk to my bro without a lot of spurious hijinks. Can we agree to this? Is this a counter-proposal? Uh, to what? To my earlier proposal. Oh, yeah, fine, I guess. Man, where is he anyway? Is he taking one of his legendary infinite showers? What can I say? Dude fancy is his, his ablutions. Frig, okay. Whatever I guess, it's time to prepare for the thrill of the hunt. Heck yeah! Uh, but seriously, that robot has been the bane of my existence ever since you sent it. <laughs> Look at the 
thing go? Where can the little guy go? Shh. I didn't send it. I sent the parts. Or correction, DS sent them. You then assembled it. You were therefore complicit in our own spectacular daily humiliations. Yeah, whatever. You wanted somebody to wrestle with. DS was being a kick butt bro, if you ask me. I didn't expect it to be nigh impossible to spar with. You know, dang well, there are adjustable si di difficulty settings. I've always recommended sending it to novice, as has DS. Yes, I know that. I've tried that. Yeah? It's just, well... When he's pulling punches and taking it all easy and such, and we start wrestling up a storm and whatnot. Um, what? It's just the whole part proceeding seems to become a bit tender for my liking. I don't understand. Isn't that what you want from a novice setting? Sparring with minimal discomfort? No, I know. It's all fine and dandy, martially speaking. Just the way he, sort of. Man, it's so awkward trying to convey this. Just never mind. No, I think I get it. Saying you were somehow dissatisfied within the presence of my robotic avatar's personal space. Was there an odor problem? Was the metal too hot to touch? Well, help me out. No, no, really. Never mind. Ah, this is bull, cried Jake. We had a pact. You were going to tiptoe all the heck around my brittle feelings. Totally mine the stuff out of those eggshell riddle mother efforts. Oh, come on, dude. What does the guy have to do, Jake? You want to wrestle? He's game. Just a man, a machine, and a secluded tropical island. Sounds like you died and went to heaven, if you ask me. Seriously, what is the sample? Lord Robot had to do to prove his worth to you. What does he have to do to make you at ease with this acoline sting of his gentle robo-group? I really want to know. Maybe he should just rip his heart out of his chest and pound it into green gravel there in the jungle with his hell of a strong robot arm. Invoke Onomatopoeia. Pound asterisk some ridiculously precise value retreat at a science speed from my rad neural net. <laughs> Check it out. Little green box all over the goddamn place. One you could ever hope to cram in a shoddy metal rabbit or any other pliable orifice which might be convenient. Because clearly it's a way, it's up to a soulless droid to feel emotions for the both of us, you callous corporal carbon ape, all trotting around with your fancy DNA and stuff. <sighs> But gosh, does your prose ever make a fellow feel uncomfortable? Bros! Alright, my mistake. You know what? I just decided. That robot's not sending makes him easy, I'm gonna disable it remote. Done. Now you got nothing to worry about. Oh, man. But now, he'll be impossible. Happy honey, Jake. Stupid. Mm, shucks, buster. Did one of the other characters in previous lines say Shucks Buster? <laughs> he pulls out his guns. Okay, if he wants happy hunting, you will give him happy hunting happily. Exit. You make a careful motion. Whoa! Make careful motion with a tentative shoe toward the egress case. And then suddenly that darn wild character select screen accosts you benignly without notice! You still can't pick a shadowy guy, but maybe I haven't been the girl yet. Better click her. But as you've been her already, there's really no point to this thing anymore. Time to move on. I like how it identifies that we've already done it. Clever game. Okay, I'm done here. I'm moving on. You're suddenly Jane again. Okay, well, if we're suddenly Jane again, let's go ahead and stop here. Put a pause uh, because we have a change of transition. I much love to you guys. I, I, I can't say how much I appreciate you all. No more on YouTube can be all YouTube. I mean that with all my heart. You all are absolutely the best. I'm sorry I've been gone for so long. Hopefully, I mean, my goal for Homeless Luck was to try to make one to two episodes per week. That was my goal. Three episodes on average per two weeks. Interfitting with Ace Attorney. And I just haven't done that. So I'm going to try to be better at that. I, I can't promise I'm going to do it, but I'm going to say I'm going to try to be better. How was that? But for now... I hope you guys have a wonderful, fantastic, amazing, awesome day. And until next time on Homestuck, so long and take care. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to comment on what you saw and what you'd like to see next. I always love to hear your thoughts. But before we go, please remember that you matter and you are brilliant and you are loved and you should always be true to yourself. Never let the world tell you any different. Much love to you from your friendly, feathered, flightless bird.